Hello out there and welcome to Anglican FAQ number 24. This one's going to be on the subject of vain repetitions and liturgical prayer. Let me start by asking this question. Does your congregation know the Lord's Prayer? Uh, let me put it differently. Does your congregation pray the Lord's Prayer? Now, how you answer that question, yes or no, is probably going to tell me how your congregation approaches Jesus' admonition to not use vain repetitions. Does that mean that any prayer uh, that's written down is therefore a vain repetition? Now, that phrase, vain repetition, comes from the translation, uh, the King James translation, Matthew 6, 7, uh, where the King James translation says, But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Now, again, what others have taken from that is that, you know, we should really only pray original prayers uh, because if we pray uh, prayers from the heritage of the church, from Christian history, from the prayer book tradition, for instance, then we can't possibly mean what we're praying. Well, what I hope to show in this video is that that's really injecting an idea into Jesus' admonition that was not present in the first century. And actually, it hasn't been present for most of the church's history. I find that evangelicals and those who come from non-denominational backgrounds tend to struggle with this. But this really is more of a, a modern, uh, modern day um, struggle. And I hope to unwrap a little bit of that here. So the first thing to just understand is that when we look at the prayers and praise of Jesus himself, we find him using set liturgical Jewish prayers. We find evidence of him using the 18 benedictions, which was a traditional Jewish prayer, and we find evidence of him praying from the traditional a Jewish Passover Haggadah at the Last Supper. Now, again, those are, those are both set liturgical prayers, and Jesus used them. Uh, they're baked in, and when he gives, again, the disciples the Lord's Prayer, I'll just note, he doesn't say, hey, 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 guys, I don't want you to ever actually pray this prayer. I, I only want you to pray like this prayer. Now, that is true. Jesus does want us to pray like the Lord's Prayer because the Lord's Prayer is, in fact, our guide for all of prayer. C.S. Lewis says, The Lord's Prayer is the prayer we festoon all our other prayers around. So that's true. But he also, like, d don't make yourself more spiritual than God, right? Like, he gives you this prayer so that you can pray it and so that you know how to pray God's will, right? This is why this is the central prayer we teach in our catechism class. We teach people how to pray based on the Lord's Prayer. And so if that's true, then the question becomes, then what is Jesus actually addressing? You know, what, what, what is he talking about then? If liturgical prayer isn't out of bounds, then what is Jesus addressing? Well, I would say that uh, the second half of the verse is really important. He says, as the heathen do, as the Gentiles do. Um, because he says they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. And there's some really, really good background here from C.K. Barrett's uh, New Testament background, where he dives in to what Jesus was most likely addressing. And what he's addressing is using prayer, prayers that don't even make sense, that just sound good, as a sort of magical charm to, uh, to, to force God's hand, to turn God into a cosmic gumball machine that will spit out what you want if you just know how to ask for what you want to get. Now, I'll just make a note and say, that's not happening anywhere in the church today, is it? Oh, yes, it is. Even in churches that don't use liturgical prayers. So I would say that Jesus is addressing actually something that's a little bit uh, different. And again, C.K. Barrett in his book, The New Testament Background, he goes into 
uh, sort of some of the details on, on that. So I think that's closer to what Jesus is getting at. I think what it comes down to when we think about vain repetitions and liturgical prayer is uh, we need to pay attention to the disposition of our heart, not whether or not we're using original extemporaneous prayers or written prayers that are from the heritage of the church. Um, These two are friends. They go hand in hand. You know, you can just as easily um, not use any liturgical prayer and turn your prayers into a kind of rote exercise where, you know, you're just, you're saying something like, Lord, we just, and we just, and we just, and that, that becomes your liturgy, you know, and you're sort of unthinkingly uh, going through prayer in a way that's sort of autopilot uh, and has no intentionality and no real reverence before God. So that's what we want to steer clear of, and that's what we want to understand when Jesus addresses the idea of vain repetitions. Uh, So I explore this idea uh, more fully in an article that's available on North American Anglican. It's linked in the description. If you would like to hear more on this and you want a deeper dive into vain repetitions and liturgical prayer, uh, then I would just invite you to read that. I hope it's helpful to you, and I look forward to seeing you again on the next Anglican FAQ. Take care. Lord bless.